Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today, due to popular demand and seeing a considerable increase in the competitive firefight player base, I'm going to be breaking down the roles that you can play within the game. Please note that although the majority of the roles I'm going to be describing will be from the point of view of a fully stacked 5-man team or squad, hearing these concepts will improve your understanding of the mode overall and your options that you have within it as an individual player. And in addition to improving your team play potential, you're also going to be hearing how I label them and how I prioritize. So obviously I'm going to be including timestamps in the description of the video as well as a top pinned comment. That way if there's a specific role that you want to reference back to, you'll be able to easily do that. Basically, let's just jump right into the most common and important role of any team, which is the point man. Commonly referenced as the B bitch by veterans from Insurgency Source, the point man is not only the first player to make it to the center objective, but also the first point of contact with the enemy team. Whether it's seeing where smokes are thrown from, seeing the prenates fly overhead, or spotting out muzzle flash and pre-fires on the way to cover, this player gets more information thrown at his or her senses at the beginning of the round than anybody else. That being said, the B player should be making the most number of callouts at the start of the round, even if they get to the objective and find it uncontested. If you do make it to Bravo unscathed without any form of nade or gunfire information to go off of, it's still valuable to be on the objective and make the call of Bravo is clear, no idea where enemies are, with the confidence of having B as an option to cap and spawn any teammates that end up dying. Since your first job is to secure B, your second job would be to capture it. As the skill gap begins to fill in the middle sections of the rankings, you're gonna find that less and less often people will bum rush the objective right off the start, but rather delay their push, throw some nades and pre-fires, that way they can get past commonly held angles around Bravo before they get on there themselves. This elaborate dance between players who get to be first and those who wish to retake it secondly ends up determining the vast majority of the rounds played in Firefight, which is why it's so crucial that you win Bravo, whether from the immediate dominance at the start or just through sheer timing and resilience. In order to win Bravo on any map, you must have good map knowledge and a good sense of timing, both of the objective itself and every single lane that leads to it. That means that you have to play it from both security side and insurgent side regardless of the spawns and which maps technically allow whichever team to get there first because the maps don't share a uniform layout your loadout options are actually pretty open as point man if you're playing with a squad that has a heavy focus on bravo you can get away with running a super light loadout uh, maybe just an mp7 aks 74 u or a light ar full out with attachments with no armor no nades no rig etc but more often than not you wouldn't you wouldn't do bad with picking up a smoke molly or frag to help soften up an adjacent lane and at other times just throw it you know throw the heavy armor on you to survive a couple extra rounds to the chest or a wall bang that would normally two shot you again with the point man your job is to be the first onto bravo ideally but if you're not the first player you need to use whatever weaponry available to gain entry and clear the objective as you gain more experience with that role you'll find that your kd is going to look pretty underwhelming when compared to your teammates but just remember that your caps bring your team back from a man losing advantage to a winning one and it will help set your team up in the mid to late game whenever the timer starts to come into play and you'll have that map control added onto it. Don't stress the kills at first. Your presence on B, as well as the callouts on enemy location, even if it's not 100% accurate, will be basically your non-stat related bonus you'll provide the team. Of course, every kill you can get on Bravo or around B will help out immensely, so the more that you can get, the better. But the Bravo objective is the number one priority in Firefight. Everybody that plays should be capable of playing point men. As metas develop and more teams start Start executing AC strats and ignoring Bravo, the point man's still going to be the first line of contact, whether it's in a passive position right off of Bravo to take it later on, or an aggressive move towards a enemy's starting ob objective, so Alpha or Charlie. This role cannot be left unfilled, so make sure you get on the B, survive B, and secure it for your team. Now, moving on to the next role, if the only colors were black and white, and Bongo Cat only uses left or right paw, the only two roles that you absolutely need to have filled in a team are your B bitch and your anchor. Anchors are commonly viewed as campers or turret shooters, but what the name really suggests is a solid fragger who can hold down at least one, but sometimes multiple lanes from a very small sector of the map. Acting as the linchpin for the map control at the start of the round, the anchor secures sections of the map for their B player to safely ignore, covering at least one of the flanks.
wavelengths that way the B point man can focus on a smaller field of view. If you're playing anchor, you have to be dialed in on your angles and your reaction. Your comms need to be clear and clean, not enough to overpower the B player, but enough so that the B player can hear you. If your point man calls out that he hears X number of players on Bravo moving past Bravo, your Y reaction has to be appropriate in order to respond to the situation. Whether it's cutting them off, pre-firing them as they push through smoke, or maybe just leaning out a little bit to the right and catch them before they even wrap the corner, generally, you're gonna wanna start off covering those adjacent lanes onto B that your team isn't currently in control of. As you move forward, your focus should be on the Bravo objective a bit more directly, making calls on enemy locations as you see muzzle flash or movement on the other side of the map. But again, since you're covering the B player, you should be prioritizing the entrances to Bravo first and foremost and denying them. You need to be able to trust your point man to get the initial kill or two on B. But if he goes down, you have to prioritize getting on the objective until it's capped. Playing anchor is very difficult because it's a reactive role, one that requires you to have enough confidence in your own shot and map awareness to quickly assess a situation, adapt to it with not a lot of room to proactively make the enemy move. Commonly, you'll only have lanes that are locked in a stare down between both of the anchors from the two teams as they try to catch good peeks on one another or straight up just deny the lane from any flanker or B player. And being that you're less of a mobile player early in the game, your loadout as an anchor needs to have very good medium to long range damage output while still being confident in the closer ranges when you have to get on the point. Common rifles used by good anchor players are the G3A3, the L85A, the FAL, AKM, EBR, and SVD. The optic that you choose and attachments that you kit out with are completely subjective on and dependent on the team that you're playing with and the map you're playing on. However, I wouldn't recommend throwing on a 3X, 4X, or 7X scope when how often you're going to be getting onto the B objective mid to late round and having to play C through D. Although there are some people with skill set required to precisely hip fire at close quarters with little to no penalty, more often than not, I'd say you need to be ADSing in order to gain control of the objective. You should most definitely be getting more kills as an anchor than point man, but if you're not supporting your B player with those kills and they're just spawning back up every round, then you're honestly failing the team. The role of anchor requires you to get impact kills, and the more kills that you get around your point man, the better win rate your team is going to see. In this role, you want to make sure you're covering your teammates, denying the lanes around them, and then consistently getting control of the map through good positioning and angle holding. The next role we're going to cover is flanker. After going over the two fundamental roles that all firefight teams share, we're finally going to get to the first specialist category. The flanker, often mistaken as a point man or lurker, is a fast moving explosive specialist that is really good at close quarters action. Using advanced map knowledge, route timing, lane avoidance, and just honestly solid mechanical ability, your flanker is a player that can upset maps through sheer shock value. If you're playing as the flanker and never get lost in the route you're running or consistently end up face to face with opposing team members and losing those close quarter gunfights, you have a lot of work to do in terms of timing and lane maneuvering. You should oftentimes be shooting players in the side or in the back, only coming face to face with opponents who know that you're coming, but you should still end up winning the gunfight because of your aggressive peaks and quick aim. Although obviously you'll be prioritizing objectives, playing as flanker gives you the freedom to attack zones of the map and then progressively wrap around the enemy team, eventually getting all the way to the enemy's objective sometimes before the battle in Bravo is even halfway done. The key to playing flanker is a trust in your teammates ability to secure the sections of the map that they're assigned and understanding how you can use their lane pressure to move up close to the enemy and kill them. Your reactions and aimability need to carry you because oftentimes you're going to be exposed to multiple angles simultaneously and have to quickly make adjustments such as jump crouching through a window or proning behind a wall to avoid being killed by an enemy anchor player. This means that you need to be able to call out enemy positions before dying or if you see no enemies on your side of the map you need to make the decision to make a direct attack on the enemies that are having success over on Alpha or Charlie. The danger with playing as a flanker is the risk of suffering from over aggression basically where you end up just pressing shift and W never stopping your character's movement to assess the team needs or positioning appropriately and end up getting killed for overextending without getting any sort of traits to speak of. As such should you notice that your KD isn't doing too hot over the course of the map probably need to change your focus from raw movement to consistent AC pressure. The optimal weapons for this kind of play style are going to be your fast rate of fire rifles and carbines such as the Mark 18 CQ, the FAL, the AK-74 but the one shot options of the shotguns are also pretty attractive for some flankers. Since the majority of your engagements will be one-on-ones from the side flank or really close to the back of the front, you want to ideally target enemies whose positions you are already aware of, either due to callouts from your B player, anchor player, or due to just your understanding of the enemy team's tendencies. This role does require very good reaction speeds. Honestly, you need to have lower reaction speed of 210 milliseconds ideally, both for your mouse clicking as well as your movement pressing. When playing flanker, you need to be aggressive at all times, intimidating to the enemy, but most importantly, unpredictable. Use your sense of timing 
and lane awareness to your advantage, and then strike with confidence. And now that we're getting to specialist roles, let's talk about the support player. Although it is hard to find good support players, even in a very, very well established game, the impact of having a competent support player on a team is unimaginable when paired with strong appointment and anchors. The support player is the most selfless player on the team, and also one of the most diverse, having multiple loadout presets that they can equip between rounds or even spawns while specializing in helping teammates get kills. When you're a support player, you are throwing smokes, mollies, frags, flashes, pre-firing, and even moving your character's body into lanes of gunfire, helping to take pressure off of your point men and or anchor so that you can get extra four seconds of cap time on Bravo for your team or get on the objective and get those extra two or three dead teammates back into the game. The support player needs to survive in the early stages of the round both so that you can use your first bit of utility and also so you can reposition later in the round and help fill whatever gaps there are in the map. Your awareness and chemistry with your team has to be top notch in order to handle this role. Some of your teammates are gonna struggle catching enemies as they run through smoke and will ask you to not throw a smoke that you would normally throw. So instead maybe you use a molly that you have to throw from the same spot and make it land in the same place and that's you have to do that. You're, since your focus is making sure that your teammates can perform a better job, you have to be creative enough and attuned with the map to make sure it can happen. Your loadouts can be pretty varied and map dependent, but the majority of them are going to include a hardly a hardly kitted out rifle, sometimes with no attachments at all, with two or three grenades, armor, chest carrier, extra magazines for pre-firing, wall bangs, and cross picks. It just depends on the team's loadout. And because of that, your common weapons are going to be low supply cost options, such as the SCAR, the M16, AKM, SKS, and maybe if you can handle sacrificing an extra point for a good full auto option, you use the M4 or the AK-74. Usually you're going to be using iron sights, and of all the roles, I have to say that playing supports probably requires the most prep work and thought process in order to execute well at a consistent rate. You're going to need to be selfless in practice, relentless in consistency, and very patient with your teammates. Basing your play style off of others is a difficult task to master, especially if you yourself don't have your own preferred way to play. So generally speaking, a fantastic support player is one who can fill any role in a team, but chooses to let others pick their roles and loadouts before picking their own. I'd recommend learning the other two primary roles of point man and anchor before switching to support. That way you can respect your teammates' needs and understand their needs without them having to explain their motivation to you. If you can master being the support player, you're going to be a highly sought after individual because most teams lack this role more than any other, even the top tier team. And finally, to top off the firefight roles, we're going to get to the most specialized of the special roles, which is the sniper. Sandstorm is a pretty improved game over its predecessor from Source in many ways. It's arguably the most noticeable change to gameplay is the map design, and with that, the impact that snipers can have in game. A sniper is one of the most iconic roles in the FPS genre, but as time has progressed, its original purpose has been lost amidst montage videos, trick shot, and also just bad public match experiences. If you're sniping, you're a long range Hawkeye with a powerful bolt action or semi auto SVD. EBR and you can swing around within the first 10 seconds with a clean early blood or you can be a nice overwatch for the point man and anchor by covering lanes that neither can cover themselves. As you play more you'll be able to possibly take more aggressive peaks on enemy players you know maybe from exposed ledge around the open and get that crucial minus before repositioning but sniping requires laser focus with visual lines of sight and an intense amount of attention for the map control and most importantly the ability to reposition between every single shot. If you're taking a ton of shots at long range and not getting any minuses, you're not playing a good sniper role. If you're having to pre-fire enemies behind walls and objectives, you shouldn't be sniping. To put it simply, the sniper should be the best pre-aimer on the team paired with impressive reaction speeds and the ability to out-anchor the anchor should that player die. As the last line of defense, the sniper is extremely pressured when left out on the flank and there's no teammates to cover. Because the likelihood of having to eventually move to an objective during a match, highly recommended that snipers bring a pistol for the objective play or a powerful semi-auto option such as the SVD or EBR, that way you can try hip firing whenever you're in a close quarter situation. Because the bolt actions are heavy, it wouldn't hurt to pack a smoke grenade as well. Moving as slowly as you do, that smoke could buy you some extra space to move up in the lane when push comes to shove and you have to get to an objective. But despite the impact that a sniper can have on a match, I would actually probably rank sniper as the least important role in firefight. Just because the majority of angles a sniper covers can be negated by smoke early on or a good molly or grenade that can actually throw up a lot of haze and just make the visibility difficult enough to snipe through. As time goes on, you may see some teams opt to go with a sniper versus a point man. So you would have basically a support player for the anchor, a sniper that supports that support player, and the anchor, you just have a whole team full of anchors with very few point men. And honestly, that would take a very, very high quality combination to compensate for it. And all it would take is one good point man to negate that strategy. So I wouldn't recommend it in this 
early stage of the game. I'd recommend making sure that on maps where sniping is limited to less than three lanes, you learn a different playstyle because honestly, there's nothing worse in competitive than watching a bolt action uh, trying to win a 1v3 clutch on an objective and they have to peek into two people who are holding opposite ends of the objective. There are some great snipers out there in the game today, but it takes a strong foundation both in the team and the individual to have a specialized sniper. Now that I've gone over the primary roles within team play of firefight, I'd like to also remind you guys this guide's meant mainly for people interested in playing in set five-man teams or squads. You can still implement these roles in your regular solo queue matchmaking, but for those who want some feedback on secondary roles, keep an eye out on my maintaining a team guide that will be releasing sometime next week. With all of that information being said, I'd like to just take the time to thank you guys for watching. This video took quite a while to edit and create, but I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. I'd also like to take this chance to thank Chrono.gg for allowing me to be an affiliate with them. If you've ever wanted to buy a game but never managed to catch it on sale, Chrono.gg offers a new game on sale every single day. And if you check them out and see a game that you see, you can support me by using my affiliate link in the description down below. As per usual, I should be streaming throughout this week. If you haven't already, make sure you follow me on Twitch and witness the Lord in action. We tend to have a good time all around. Till then, rest well, recharge, and enjoy peace of mind. The Lord bless it.